Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, February 12th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, the big event today, of course, Microsoft's Patch Tuesday. And with that, we got patches for 99 different vulnerabilities, 10 of which are rated as critical, 87 as important and two as moderate. Now, the big highlight patch here is sort of for CVE 2020-0674. This is the Internet Explorer survey that sort of became public just a month ago, just a few days after the last patch Tuesday. This is the one where Microsoft recommended you should disable jscript.dll in order to protect yourself. Now, got a little bit more details now with the patch. Apparently, this one affects actually Trident rendering engine in Internet Explorer, which also, by the way, means that uh, Microsoft Office and so may be vulnerable uh, to this same flaw if you receive an Office document with some embedded HTML that would then also be rendered using the Trident rendering engine. So this particular vulnerability has already been exploited in the wild and yes, uh, should definitely be at the top of your patch list. Now there are a total of uh, four other vulnerabilities that have already been publicly disclosed. Two are an elevation of purge bug in Windows Installer, not really a huge deal in my opinion. Also the security bypass in Secure Boot. Uh, we had quite a few of those and you know, they're of course always a little bit uh, tricky, like a you know, Secure Boot is supposed to protect you if you're leaving like a computer unattended. And then we have information disclosure vulnerability in Edge and IE. And remote desktop is that protocol is just not going away when it comes to patch Tuesdays. Now this time we have two vulnerabilities that are remote code execution flaws in the client component of remote desktop. So not the server. Typically to exploit these flaws, an attacker would have to convince you to connect to a malicious server, which of course may be doable via a link that you're being sent to click on. Now, we also still have a remote code execution vulnerability in a remote desktop services. That's CVE 2020-0655. Microsoft only rates this as important in order to exploit this. You need to be already authenticated to remote desktop services. So uh, this is nothing like some of the other vulnerabilities we had uh, where authentication was not required. And if you're still running an exchange server, then you have to pay attention to CVE 2020-0688. This particular vulnerability allows a remote code execution on the mail server and all it takes is a malicious email. And yes, in this case, you actually would gain system level permission if you're successfully exploiting this vulnerability. Similar, there's also a remote code execution vulnerability in the SQL Server reporting services, but that's much less likely going to be exposed than of course, a mail server. So those are kind of the highlights other than that, uh, lots of vulnerabilities, of course, in Office, in Scripting Engine, so all the standard vulnerabilities. Adobe also came out with a patch for Flash at this time. Adobe this month only fixed uh, one single arbitrary code execution vulnerability CVE 2020-3757. Affects all operating systems, uh, not just Windows, so also Mac OS, Linux, and Chrome OS. Also from Adobe, but not included in the Microsoft uh, Windows patches as the Flash uh, issues are a patch for Adobe Acrobat and a PDF Reader. Uh, that fixes 17 different vulnerabilities. And then Adobe FrameMaker, 21 different vulnerabilities being fixed in this product. 
But enough about patches. Uh, well, ransomware is still going around and taking advantage of systems that are not patched. Sophos actually came across an interesting little trick that uh, ransomware is uh, using lately. And that's an out of date Gigabyte driver. Gigabyte makes motherboards and they used to ship uh, back in 2013 or so a uh, vulnerable driver. There was actually some controversy about this vulnerability when it was first reported and Gigabyte sort of claimed the vulnerability didn't exist. Either way, Gigabyte stopped actually shipping this driver. But uh, well, you can still download it. And that's exactly what's happening here with ransomware. Ransomware is downloading, installing this driver, which works fine. It's a validly signed binary. But once they have this driver installed, they're now able to exploit a privilege escalation vulnerability in this driver to then take out antivirus software and infect your system. Pretty neat little trick here. Of course, also tricky sort of from a signature perspective and such. Uh, I would suggest that you have a malware signature for uh, this particular driver because it shouldn't really be sitting on a system anymore. Of course, the driver itself is not malicious. It's just vulnerable and enabling this attack. One piece of ransomware that appears to be using uh, this particular trick is the Robin Hood ransomware. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.